in to say he was thinking about upgrading his two-year-old Intel Q6600 powered desktop, but decided against it since that quad-core CPU had some overclocking potential left in it. He wrote, his question is, uh, the old GeForce 8600 GPU that is in the system doesn't work well enough for new games, and I would like to play them on at least high settings. Which graphics card should I purchase for the best, or which would be the best for gaming? And I don't want to spend more than 300 bucks. Signed, Florian. Florian says he already has three gigabytes of RAM and he's willing to add more. You would probably say get, three. Get, go to four. I don't yeah. understand where three comes from. That's a dual channel memory system that's on that CPU and the motherboard, so you want two match sticks of right. something. That so alone can, will help boost your performance. Because those CPUs will eat all the data that the memory can throw mm -hmm. at them. So it, I think that one change, yeah. if you have one two gig stick already and one one gig stick, go find another two gig stick and then get it up to four so you have those dual channels of relatively equal memory. It doesn't have to be identical, I don't think, but as long as they're timed the same, which you can fudge with in the settings. It though. should be so cheap to buy that. Hey, by the way, holding on to that CPU motherboard combination, it's a pretty good idea. You're only going to get around maybe 20% more performance if you upgrade to a Core i5, like a low-end Core i7 or, or a Core i5. At least look at Tom's hardware performance index, which is 50% time-based scores, basically how long it takes a CPU to complete a task, like 25% games. It's really worth checking out those Tom's hardware charts because they, they basically have all the GPUs and all the CPUs. We were totally talking about that before. Now, Mr. Heron's pretty big on that your GPU and your CPU should cost around the same price. That's yeah. the classic rule. It's like a $300 CPU, $300 graphics card. Well, it's like a $200 CPU oh, now. Either way. So okay. it's just like, a, you know, don't, don't go too crazy on one end without thinking about the other end, for gaming in particular. Because you need the CPU to feed the GPU, and the GPU needs to be able to process everything totally. the CPU can throw at it. Your card is definitely outdated. I would say figure around $200 for your GPU. That's what your Q6600 is selling for. It's about what the Core i5 that replaces the Q6600 is, is selling more, even though it's only got two cores. Um, I don't, you know, NVIDIA versus ATI, I just buy the I, fastest card I can get for my money. I think it's ATI, yeah. in my opinion. Right now, I'm just, I like their driver packages better, mm -hmm. and they even include a built-in overclocking tool that's something you don't get with N NVIDIA, in case you need to underclock the card for whatever <laughs> reasons, it's another story. But uh, the Pat mentioned the 4890 that sells for around 200 bucks. 380 the ATI. 4890, that's pretty that's fast. That's a good price for, for that card. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be honest with you though. If you're gonna, depending on what resolution <laughs> you're gaming at, though, you're not you sh you're not gonna get max quality out of a game like Battlefield Bad Company Two. That's the current game where I'm finding that's one of the most challenging titles I've messed with lately. Really? That's the one that's forced me to buy a new card. I'm currently running that on an i7 system I built about a year ago with a 512 meg ATI 4870 card, and it starts to chug on medium. So <laughs> I, I don't even bother with high, and I play on low <laughs> normally just so I can get a solid frame rate when I'm playing the game multiplayer online. I'm upgrading to a one gigabyte 5870 in their 5.8 series. Uh, it's going to cost me about 420 bucks. I should have that tomorrow. I'm really hoping that arrives. I've been waiting like a month, like I mentioned earlier. Anyway, and that card, uh, the 40, uh, the 5850 mm -hmm. though, would be in the $300 range. And if you're looking for uh, mm. an ATI solution there, and it has a gig of onboard video memory. I didn't think I would need a gigabyte of onboard video RAM until I started messing with the games that have increased detail within that for the texture resolution right. and things like that. All Games, of a sudden, like the big, giant texture maps. <laughs> and if you're going to run it, even I'm running it 1680 by 1050, and I needed a gigabyte of RAM in order to keep up if I'm going to play at any decent high setting to make it look pretty. And <laughs> so if you've got like a 2560 by 1600 monitor... You need way, you, way more video card yeah. to drive that at native resolution, at least. That's just... That's a lot of pixels. Yeah, and I gotta say, props to the graphics card CPU charts up at Tom's Hardware. It's great. If you want to get an idea of how your current processor performs compared to what's new, it's a really great way to do it. By the way, if anybody out there is thinking about upgrading your CPU, if you have multi-threaded applications, like stuff where it basically can run across as many cores as you can throw at it, consider AMD's new six-core Phenom 2. The X6-1090T and 1055T deliver ridiculous multi-core processing. The, the 1055T starts at 200 bucks. That's a fraction of what Intel's $1,000 Core i7-980X costs, but it's really amazing performance for the money. At least, you know, if you're, if you're doing stuff where it's like being able to use a single core, meh, uh, you know, and Antec says Intel's quad-core Linfield processors, the Core i5 Series 700 to Core i7-800 are better buys. But if you have multi-threaded applications, can you say handbrake rendering machine? Yeah, <laughs> or, or multiple audio encoding with DB, DB Power Amp when I, uh, I love DB encode Power my FLAC Amp. files to, uh, like, say, AAC audio. Mm -hmm. It, it, devote, it devote, uh, 
It'll take every chunk of every core you it, can throw it, at it. It dedicates one core per encode. So if they've got like eight virtual cores or whatever, suddenly there are eight encodes running at once, and it looks, it looks cool to watch. I fun. like that, so.